In this video, I'll show you how to patch individual components on the Oracle Private Cloud Appliance. Security and other updates are provided through patches. Upgrading your appliance is a different process and uses a different set of commands than patching. For upgrade directions, refer to the System Upgrade section of the Oracle Private Cloud Appliance Administrator Guide at the URL shown. Patches are delivered as RPM packages through a series of dedicated channels on the Unbreakable Linux Network, or ULN. Oracle Private Cloud Appliance is not allowed to connect directly to Oracle's ULN servers. Therefore, you must use a local ULN mirror on a system inside the data center. Creating a local ULN mirror and configuring your environment for patching is beyond the scope of this video. Refer to the Configure Your Environment for Patching section of the Oracle Private Cloud Appliance Patching Guide at the URL shown. Before you begin patching, make sure that you have the correct permissions and that you have downloaded the RPM packages to the appropriate locations. You should also run health checks and perform a system backup before you begin. I'm going to demonstrate patching from the Service Enclave command line interface, but you can also patch individual components using the Service Web UI. I've logged on to the Service Enclave with an administrator account. Refer to the Using the Service CLI on Oracle Private Cloud Appliance video for a demonstration on how to use the service command line interface. I'll first enter the command show custom CMDS patch request to ensure that I have the correct permissions to use the patching commands. Notice that there are a number of patch commands. These commands allow you to patch individual hardware and software components. When you are installing multiple patches at the same time, perform the patching operations in this order. Compute nodes, management nodes, MySQL Cluster Database, etcd, Vault, Kubernetes Cluster, Platform, and Firmware. In this demonstration, I'll be using the patch cn command to patch compute nodes. I'll be using the patch host command to patch the management nodes. And I'll be using the patch platform command to patch the platform. You'll also notice some ULN mirror commands. The setup stream ULN mirror is used to enable synchronization between the repository and the mirror server. After you have updated the local mirror server, the sync upstream ULN mirror command, which I'll run in this demonstration, updates the local repository used for compute node patches. And the show upstream ULN mirror command allows you to view the status of the update. I've switched to an appliance that has been configured for patching and I'm logged in as the administrator to the service command line interface. The first command I'll run is sync upstream ULN mirror, which updates the local repository. This command is successful. I'm going to patch the compute nodes first. I'll run the command list compute node and see that I have six compute nodes in this appliance. Next, I'll run a series of commands to complete the patch procedure for each individual compute node. These commands are provisioning lock ID equal the compute node to set the provisioning lock. Then I'll run maintenance lock ID equal the compute node to set the maintenance lock. Then I'll run show compute node ID equal the compute node. This command shows that the locks are set to true and also provides the host IP address, which is needed for the next command. The next command is patch CN host IP equal the IP address of the compute node, ULN equal the fully qualified domain name or the IP address of the ULN mirror in your data center and the path name to the RPM files using the syntax shown. Next, I'll run the git upgrade jobs and wait for the patch job to complete. Next, I'll reboot the compute node. After the compute node has rebooted, I'll run the maintenance unlock ID equal compute node to release the maintenance lock. And finally, I'll run the provisioning unlock ID equal the compute node to release the provisioning lock. I'll begin by patching compute node one. I'll run provisioning lock ID equal and provide the ID of compute node one. The output shows it was a success. Next, I'll run maintenance lock ID equal and provide the ID of compute node one. This was also a success. Next, I'll run show compute node ID equal and provide the ID of compute node one. The output shows that the provisioning locked and the maintenance locked settings are true. You can also get the IP address of the compute node, which is needed in the patch CN command. Next, I'll run patch CN host IP equal the IP address of compute node one. ULN equal and provide the IP address of the ULN mirror and the path to the RPM packages. The output shows that the service request has been submitted and provides the job ID and the request ID. 
This could take up to around 15 minutes to complete, so I'll speed through this. I'm now showing the output of the get upgrade jobs command, which I just ran. This shows a number of older jobs with various results, but the job that I just submitted is at the top of the list, and it shows that the result is passed, meaning that the patches were successfully applied to the compute node. Next, I'm going to exit the service CLI and SSH into management node 3 on my appliance. From here, I can SSH into compute node 1 and reboot this compute node. I need to wait a few minutes for the compute node to come back up, so I'll speed through this. After a few minutes, I'll ping compute node 1 just to ensure it's finished rebooting, and my ping command is successful. Now that compute node 1 has rebooted, I'll exit from management node 3. I'll log back into the service command line interface. The final two steps for the compute node are to release the maintenance lock and release the provisioning lock in that order. Both these commands require the compute node ID as an argument, so I'll run the command list compute node to get the ID for compute node 1. To release the maintenance lock, I'll run the command maintenance unlock ID equal and provide the ID of compute node 1. The output shows it was a success. Finally, I'll run provisioning unlock ID equal and provide the ID of compute node 1. This was also a success, and that completes the patching of compute node 1. Perform the same sequence of steps and commands shown that I summarized earlier in this video for the remaining compute nodes. I've completed these steps, and here I'm showing the output of the get upgrade jobs command. Notice that all six compute nodes now have a result of passed. I'll now move on to patching of management nodes. Similar to compute node patching, the management nodes must be patched one node at a time. One of the management nodes holds the cluster virtual IP. Determine which management node that is and patch the other management nodes first. You can then move the cluster virtual IP to one of the patched management nodes. At that point, you are free to patch the final management node after it no longer holds the cluster virtual IP. I'll log on to one of the management nodes and check the status of the cluster. From here, I'll run the command PCS status. The output shows that management node 3, or PCA MN03, currently holds the cluster virtual IP. So I want to patch the other management nodes first, then move the cluster virtual IP to one of these patched management nodes before patching management node 3. I'll log off this node and log back into the service command line interface. Now I'll run the command patch host, host IP equal, and provide the IP address of management node 1, ULN equal, and provide the IP address of the ULN mirror and a path to the RPM packages. I made a typo, which I'll correct and run the command again, and this time it is a success. The output shows the service request has been submitted and provides the job ID and the request ID. I'll run the get upgrade jobs, and we see our management host Patch job has a result of none. I'll wait a few minutes and run the command again, and now we see the result is passed. Next, I'm going to exit the service CLI and SSH into management node 3. From here, I can SSH into management node 1 and reboot this management node. I need to wait a few minutes for the management node to come back up, so I'll speed through this. After a few minutes, I'll ping management node 1 just to ensure it's finished rebooting and my ping command is successful. Now that management node one has rebooted, I'll exit from management node three. I won't demonstrate, but next I need to repeat these steps for management node two. From the service CLI, run the patch host command for management node two. Run the get upgrade jobs command to ensure the patch result is passed. Here I'm showing the output of this command and the result is passed. Then exit the service CLI and log into management node 2 and reboot it. You next need to move the cluster virtual IP to one of the patched management nodes. Use the PCS resource command as shown. This example moves the virtual IP to management node 1. You can then optionally run the PCS status command to ensure the previous command was successful. I'll demonstrate these two commands. I'm logged on to management node 3, and I'll run PCS resource move MGMT RG PCA MN01. This breaks my connection to management node 3, so I'll log into management node 1 and run the PCS status command from here. The output shows that management node 1, or PCA MN01, now holds the cluster virtual IP, so I'm now free to patch management node 3 
to complete patching of all the management nodes. I'm not going to demonstrate, but you just need to run the patch host command from the service CLI for management node 3. Run the get upgrade jobs command to ensure the patch result is passed. And exit the service CLI and log into management node 3 and reboot it. Here I'm showing the output of the get upgrade jobs command and see that the result is passed for all three management nodes. I'll now move on to patching the platform. The platform patching covers both the internal services of the platform layer and the administrative and user level services exposed through the infrastructure services layer. From the service CLI, use the patch platform command as shown. This command has only one argument, the fully qualified domain name of the ULN mirror in your data center. As was the case for compute node patching and management node patching, use the get upgrade jobs command to check the status of the platform patch. I'll demonstrate patching the platform. I'm logged on to the service CLI. I'll enter the command patch platform ULN equal the fully qualified domain name or the IP address of the ULN mirror in your data center and the path name to the RPM packages. Output shows the status of success and the job and request IDs. I'll run the command get upgrade jobs. The initial result of the job is none. I'll wait a few minutes and run the command again. This time the result is passed. Refer to the Oracle Private Cloud Appliance documentation for more information. For additional training videos like this, go to oracle.com slash go to slash PCA learning. This concludes this video. Thank you for watching.